What's up guys, I'm back once again to show you some of the hot mods of the week. And in this week's episode, we of course have a brand new weapon mod, as well as a brand new comic retexture mod. But to kick things off, we have leaf piles improved. And what this mod is going to do, is take all of the old looking leaf piles in the game, and update them with a brand new 2k texture, which in my opinion, looks considerably better. Gone are the old bright red textures, now the leaves actually look dead, which I'm sure at this point, they probably would be. And after running around my game with this mod installed, I really noticed just how many piles of leaves there really are, and just how much of a big difference this one mod makes. But anyway, let's move on to the next mod. Now the next mod I have for you is Scrap Throwables, and what this mod is going to do is allow you to break down grenades and mines to their base components, or at least as close as you can get. And to do this, simply go to a chem station, here you'll be able to break down all of the grenades and mines in the game into something called a scrapped version and this is going to sit in your junk tab until you use it for something else. And as for this new component, it's going to have half the value as its crafted counterpart but have the same amount of weight as it's the same amount of pieces just no longer put together. And as for the actual breaking down of these grenades and mines, it's going to require you to have the same ranks of demolitions expert and scrapper as it would to craft these grenades. Also, breaking down baseball grenades and bottle cap mines will not give you the respected baseball or lunchbox because for whatever reason, this will cause the game to crash. Now, if you like this mod, then you may also like 4 Miss miscellaneous crafting and what this mod is going to do is add three brand new categories to the chem station. Junk, technology, alcohol brewing, and finally, a few more options in the utility section. And of course, all of these brand new recipes have appropriate perk and material requirements. So combining this mod with the previous one could make for some interesting gameplay. Now usually, when mod makers attempt to integrate a new weapon into Fallout 4 from a different game, they tend to choose a game that is somewhat realistic, like Call of Duty or Battlefield for example. But with this next mod, the mod maker is throwing all of these rules aside and making a weapon from one of my personal favourite games and of course I'm talking about Ratchet and Clank N90 Hurricane and of course what this mod is going to do is add in the N90 Hurricane from Ratchet and Clank up your arsenal into Fallout 4 and you can acquire this weapon from the Concord Speakeasy on a table on the second floor Yes. and next to it you'll also find a letter explaining how the guy that sold this wouldn't accept caps only bolts and screws but anyway, in terms of upgrades, you have the choice of 4 upgrades, which ultimately is the only thing that's going to affect the damage output of the weapon. Now, as I've previously explained, usually when a weapon is made into Fallout 4, it's from another semi-realistic game, not something as wacky as Ratchet and Clank. But the mod author has definitely done a very good job with this weapon. And as for the weapon itself, it's going to use plasma cartridges as ammo, and technically it has infinite ammo or the never ending legendary effect from the base game. Now the only downside about this weapon is it doesn't have a firing sound, despite the fact it's supposed to use the same sound as a plasma weapon. Now the next mod I have for you is US Covert Operations Manual Magazine Retexture, and what this mod is going to do is retexture all of the Covert Ops manuals in the game with this brand new up to date texture to make them look more like the actual manuals that they're based off of, and this is going to come in two files one with bloodstains, and one without. So, if you're looking to make these 10 magazines look a little bit more interesting, then maybe this mod is worth a download. And, of course, this week's weapon mod is the Type 99 Light Machine Gun, and you can acquire this weapon from the armory inside of the Yang Z. And, in terms of upgrades, you have the choice of 5 receivers, 1 barrel, 1 stock, 1 magazine, 2 sights, no muzzles, and finally, a choice of bipod. Now, if you didn't already know, this weapon uses the same animations as the Bren gun that we covered back in episode 48, and it's probably because of this that this weapon really does remind me of the Bren gun, but one of the main differences being that you can actually see down these sights. But unlike the Bren gun, this weapon doesn't have an add-on mod to increase its customization, but that's okay because not every weapon mod needs a crazy amount of customization. Now at this point, I would usually wrap up the video, but instead we're going to take a look at one more mod by the same mod author that brought us Gorse Gatling and the Plasma Minigun from last week's episode. 
but this time the mod they have for us is Photon Pulsar and you can acquire this weapon from the armory inside of the castle. And in terms of upgrades, you have the choice of 3 barrels, 2 sights, and finally 2 muzzles. Now I believe this is the third weapon mod by this particular mod author that we've taken a look at, and I have to say that their weapon mods are some of the most unique that I've ever seen, and this one is probably my favourite. And yes, they may all be heavy weapons, but honestly, heavy weapon mods don't get enough attention. So I'm just glad that there's a mod author out there that really enjoys heavy weapons, just as much as I do. But anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this mod, and the video for that matter. I hope you all enjoyed the mods here today, and if you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I hope to see you all in the next video.